Hey there guys, how's it going? Today I'm back with another tutorial on Game Maker Studio. And this is one um, that has been requested a couple of times uh, this year. It's been a while since I've had this request, but here it is anyway. This is a free first-person horror game made with Game Maker Studio, and I'm going to show you how to make this. So as you can see, I've, had, I've added a couple of lighting effects and these particles of snow outside to give a little bit more of the creepy ambience, you know and this flashlight which I'm going to be showcasing later here it is up close and yeah, when you press E when you're close to it you can pick it up I'm gonna be showing you what that looks like later so what can you do in this game you can crawl through the house you're supposed to escape well you can't it's up to you to make that because I really haven't thought of an uh, escape plan at all so this here is the place where you crawl through uh, from one room to the other and well yeah, here's the snow again, and as you can see here it is pitch black, so this is where I'm going to be showing you what the flashlight looks like. I'm going to turn it on right now. Here it is. So when you hold the right mouse button you can focus the flashlight left and right, up and down, and well yeah, I know the outside, the outdoors environment goes black. That's because it randomly turns night in this game when you turn on the flashlight, that's usually because of the way I made the flashlight, it just doesn't really work with the outdoors environment, but that will be in maybe future tutorials on a first-person horror game. I don't know if I will ever do another tutorial on this, if it really isn't that necessary. So yeah, that's really all I have for now. This is just an old house that was burned down. You can think of a story yourself. You can finish this game, you can work on the game, you can... No, take some assets from the game, whatever you like. Uh, so I really hope you're going to enjoy this tutorial. Um, I'm sure put a lot of work into it. It has some Resident Evil 7 vibes. So uh, let's get started with the tutorial. But first, I have this little introduction video for you. So please enjoy. First of all, there's a few things you need to know about horror games. The survival horror genre has been around and popular for a long time now, and has seen severe changes over a relatively small period of time. To me, it started with Resident Evil and Silent Hill. I played the original Silent Hill when I was very young, and I still play it to this very day. It still manages to scare me, but why? When you're making a horror game, you should focus mainly on your game's ambience, setting, and sometimes the game's story. Silent Hill 2 from 2001 had a very engaging storyline, as well as a terrifying ambience. Resident Evil from 1996, to me, was the very first horror game to ever successfully implement jump scares but you should not be relying on jump scares as your game's scare factor. Jump scares can startle the player, but will not scare them. It will only scare them when you add a ridiculously loud sound to it, and have the player scared of encountering hearing problems. The once kings of survival horror, Resident Evil, Alone in the Dark, and Silent Hill aren't doing very well at the moment. Resident Evil has become kind of a Michael Bay action movie rather than a survival horror game, however Resident Evil 7 seems to be taking things a lot more seriously. Silent Hill got cancelled last year as we all know, while previous installments like Downpour and Homecoming just didn't feel as scary or engaging as the first four games. I was dumbfounded when I saw the latest installment of the Alone in the Dark series, Illumination. But you're not alone and you're not in the dark, so uh, yeah, I don't know what that what that's all about, it's, it's not good. One last thing that's important in a horror game is that dark does not equal scary. It makes many situations a lot more tense indeed, but pitch black darkness is more annoying than anything else. A well-lit room can be the scariest thing ever if you put the right amount of effort in creating a creepy environment and ambience. So don't make any parts of the map pitch black as it, is, as it isn't scary, but annoying for the player. And as some of you may know, I love classic survival horror games such as Silent Hill and stuff, and that's why I've been developing bad memories for so long. If you haven't played it yet and you like classic survival horror games, why not give it a go? Well anyway, let's get on with the tutorial. Hey there guys, welcome back to Game Maker Studio. Here we are with HorrorTutorial.project. And you all know that what that means. Um, so the beginning of this video is probably the longest intro I've ever done. Please tell me what you think of it. If I shouldn't be doing intros like that, if uh, it's too long. Uh, tell me if you, whether you liked it or not, please. Alright, so let's make a horror game. So, horror games all about ambience and uh, sound design is very important and stuff like that. So here are some initial sprites. The most important sprite, or at least the most significant sprite here, is the flashlight. Which is the one that we'll actually look at. The other ones really aren't all that important, except for this one. This one is just a mask, but yeah, you know, it's just a mask. So it really isn't all that important. Um, the backgrounds, 
some textures. These are pretty large. I mean, I've seen bigger textures than this. I've used bigger textures than this, but my computer really isn't doing all that well. So, yeah, but unfortunately, I won't be able to be using those bigger textures. Um, this one, I'm I will not be using this one. So this one, I mean, so if it's missing, don't worry about it. I'll, you won't need it at all. So uh, you're not missing out on anything. Uh, so really, there isn't anything that important to note here, I think. No, nah, not really. Let's go to the scripts, DVD Draw All. This is a tip I got a few months back, maybe even half a year ago, I think. Is uh, to loop through all the objects. To set one object called Object Draw or something like that. And set with this object to draw this. It's uh, a lot faster, and yes, it is indeed a lot faster. So I'll be using that from now on. Um, let's go to the objects. So let's start with object player. So initially, GMFT in it again. Um, I might have two version up, two versions up again. If this causes problems again on different PCs, it's really strange. It doesn't happen on my PC once again, but I will have a version up without this uh, script right here, so that it is compatible with any system, anywhere. So as you can see, I set texture to repeat. Our texture set repeat to true, which is because, um, well, the w one or two textures are being repeated, I think, so that's why I turn that on. Draw texture flush before everything else. This is because the player is the first object in your entire room, so when you flush all textures, this should clear up some memory issues and um, it should make your game a lot faster. I'll be setting D4D start to true, or, well, you can set it to false, you can set D4D end something like that, but do for the start here, do for the set hidden to true, lighting to true initially, culling to true, and, oh no, really, it's, really, I still haven't fixed that, that's strange. Uh, color, C white, Z is zero initially, pitch is zero, shading, well, you know, all this standard stuff, this right here is just for a little swaying animation, uh, with the flashlight, you, you may have noticed it, maybe you didn't, but when you try this game out yourself, you will definitely notice it. Uh, display set reset. Display reset. I set this. Um, now I turned it off. I commented it by adding two slashes, forward slashes right here. This is basically for anti-aliasing. If you didn't know that yet, this is uh, two times anti-aliasing. You can set it to four, eight, sixteen. I think maybe. And this is for vertical synchronization or V-sync, which I will not be using at all, as I get a frame rate of about eight when I'm using that. Global light color is this color. This is basically a green bluish color. That's coming from outdoors. Um, this is your initial speed. F speed is zero. I'll explain that later. Global flashlight is set to zero by default. Global lights is one by default. And global half flashlight is zero by default. As you need to pick it up before you actually start. Uh, let's go here to... This Ow. What the hell? That something bit me. I don't know what that was. Scary. Uh, display, here is the mouse looking script again. Uh, you all know this one by now. So I don't think there's uh, any need to explain it anymore. So when the flashlight is on and you hold the right mouse button, or, or not hold the right mouse, right mouse button, I'm sorry, you can actually change the, the direction of where you're looking at, or up and down, or whatever like that. But when you are holding the right mouse button and your flashlight is on, you can actually focus the flashlight like I showed you in the video. Uh, so let's see, escape ends the game, so if you're actually um, planning on finishing this game, and you have finished the game by whenever that may be, don't forget to uh, delete this, of course. Because many players will think that's the pause button, but it will just close the game down. So here it is again, Global Delta, this is from a tutorial, um, from another tutorial on YouTube. This is basically for frame skipping, so if you have a very good PC that can actually reach up to 144 frames per second or something like that, you can, well, just use this and it shouldn't be showing you any issues or anything. Nothing should be faster than it is initially. So my computer is pretty good at 30 frames per second, but that's it. Um, so yeah, 30 frames per second is a little old school, but whatever. So you fall, this is basically your gravity, when you're lower than this nearest wood Z, you will not fall through the floor, of course, you aren't supposed to. Um, this is for crouching, where you press the C button, 
when you press it, you will just crouch. When you hold it, you will go prone. You will lay down and stuff like that. Uh, controls, you can only move forward. So if you want to implement some new controls, you can always do that right here. It really isn't all that hard. I could have done it, of course, but I'm lazy. I'm sorry. This is just for collision when you're lower than the wood, so you won't just walk through it, and you will probably fall through the map anyway. So I fixed that. Uh, these are just basically the same thing. Mouse wheel up just turns your flashlight on, and mouse wheel down just turns it off again. The projection right here is a little different than usual. I'm using the Dectorate instead of uh, Time Supply divided by 180, which this is just way more efficient. It looks, it does the same thing. But it just, it's just a lot shorter, so that's why I'm doing it like this. And as you can see, I'm using a light right here as well. This is for the flashlight. So this only lights up, illuminates the area around you when the flashlight is on, of course. Um, draw GUI, here's the flashlight. So as you can see, I've set alpha plan to true here and set it to false again. This is for optimization for any PC, whatever. Um... I'm loading this sprite, which is smaller than the display, as you can see, uh, well, you can't see it right here, but my monitor is a 1080p monitor, and this sprite is uh, a 540p uh, sprite, I'll call it that. And it will be resized to fit the screen entirely. Uh, so yeah, that was the player. All these objects are basically the same, it's just for drawing the wood. This is the only object I think I drew without using the draw all thing I think there were some objects that I drew let's see which one does it this one so you can see there's no draw event and it's set to invisible that is because draw all takes care of that there's a script dvd draw all with object wall it draws that wall <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm not doing that with this one because uh, the ceiling textures kind of bugged out when I did that so that's why I'm not using the draw all functions on this uh, particular set of floors. I don't think any of this does. Oh, this one does. Alright, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, the walls, I showed you this. It's basically the same thing. When alarm zero gets reached, it will just face the nearest floor to it. I always do that, you know. Um, object flashlight, this is the flash that you can pick up. As you can see right here, pick up the flashlight. When you press the E button and you're close to the flashlight, you can pick it up. And you will gain a flashlight. Flashing so you can see, this is just for a little bit of animation. You, because it's really hard to see the flashlight when it's, well, relatively dark. So that's uh, why it kind of illuminates itself. So you can see it. Uh, these are basically point lights. Well... Not basically, they are point lights, nothing else. And it just illuminates the, um, well, the house that you're in. That's all it does. Same goes for these two. Forest is the outside forest. It's just a wall with a texture of trees on it, which I'll show you real quick. Here it is. This is it. This is what you'll see outside. This is also for optimization. I could, of course, populate the outdoors environment with a bunch of tree models, but that would just be silly if you wouldn't be able to go outside of the house, so uh, that's why I did that. Uh, object lamp, it's basically a ceiling lamp, it's just a model. These are just free assets. The snow is a little bit more interesting, you might want to take a look at that if you want, or, well, we can just take a look at it together. Object snow right here. It's basically the same model as the forest one, it's just a wall with different rotations and well yeah, it just gives a nice snow effect. So if you want a little bit of snow in your game, of course, just copy it. It's a little particle effect, that's a little extra. Um, so yeah, I kind of explained all I wanted to explain. Um, in a recent poll result... You, you guys told me that I should um, actually increase the speed of my tutorials. They were a little slow, so that's why this one was a little faster. Please tell me that you do like this new uh, format. Um, so yeah, that's the tutorial of the horror game that I wanted to show you. And there's one more uh, little request that I had, and that was a little tutorial on Model Creator. So I'm going to be doing that one real quick as well.
how to use model creator so I've been using model creator for five years now I think maybe six I can see here it is this is model creator it's a really nifty program it's not as powerful as blender is but it's still really nice to make some quick game maker models so this here just draw a triangle for example just draw a triangle well if you don't want to watch this which I really understand I want to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial so um, well this is a triangle as you can see there's a lot of shortcuts right here a copy selection this just copies the thing I'll press it for you and then press M to move it well now it's over here um, okay so there is a lot to explain about this uh, model creator but I really don't have that much time to do it let's just add a normal shape this goes for every shape um, this is how big that shape is and this is how high the shape will be so when I set it for example to oh that doesn't work okay to 80 and this is the amount of steps so 4 will be a square and well 12 is fine by now so when you press OK you have a cylinder but you cannot rotate this thing or anything you need to press T first so now it has been converted to uh, polygons or uh, vertices I'm sorry triangles um, so yeah now you can press for example M to move this thing or press J to rotate it some you do 90 degrees on the Y angle you get this when you press R you will get a rectangular selection so you can just select certain edges that you need or the entire thing of course um, delete just delete something uh, yeah what else is there to say about it yeah, I know this is really really short but like I said I really don't have that much time to do it so I will gladly personally explain it to you if that's fine um, so yeah that was the entire tutorial I know this is a pretty long video in the end I don't know how long it will be the intro is pretty long I really hope you like that one as well um, so I will have a viewer poll in the description below to ask you guys what you want to see in the next tutorial and uh, well, please go vote on that and I'll see you guys later